This is a serious time of uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen from one year to the next, so you might as well enjoy life to the fullest. And one of the ways you can do that is to get a travel trailer, toy hauler, anything that puts you out here, away from all the chaos, to reset your soul. It is worth everything. This is my family's and I first year of owning a travel trailer, some of the places we went and some of the joys we experienced, and also some of the mistakes we made when we first bought one and things we would have done and warned people had we been able to do it again. So stay tuned, check out this video because it's from start to finish how we went through the entire process. Stay tuned. First things first, finding a reputable dealer. Don't go on Google and pick the first one. That does not mean they're the best or the most popular. Google ads can be deceiving, so find the right one. Look at Yelp reviews, Facebook ratings, any type of form replies to find the right one. When you get in here, make sure everything works to include starting the lights, all the slide outs, all the lift up and down beds, everything. And that includes those cigarette chargers and everything up there. He's giving me an overview right now, but when I did this, I did not check whether or not they worked. And later on, they didn't work and we had to fix that. These are indicator lights for my battery, fresh water, gray water, and black water. Make sure this is gone over thoroughly because this is how you make sure you have anything in there and whether that you're gonna overflow or whether that you need to empty. Make sure all these switches work. In this case, we have a small toy hauler that has a fuel station, which is pretty awesome. If it comes with a generator, make sure that works. Make sure they explain the awning process to you explicitly. Make sure they show you how to adjust it for when it rains so that water doesn't puddle up and ruin your awning. If it's in there, make sure they test right in front of you that it works. And that includes everything from slide outs and beds to breakers and outlets. Make sure the heating and cooling system is explained very carefully to you because all of them defer. Some of the accessories in your trailer like this refrigerator and freezer are going to be able to run up either propane or electric. Make sure that's explained to you thoroughly on how you operate either setting. And make sure that any sort of add-ons like these clips that allow your refrigerator and freezer to vent while in storage so no odors form is also very necessary. Also make sure that he goes over with you the major components that might go wrong that you might have to troubleshoot on the fly if you get to your spot and your fridge is not working and you can't understand why. Because there are things like these buttons and that little slide out right there on the coils that make all the difference in whether or not that fridge even works to begin with. For instance, this feature has an auto setting that can run on gas while the trailer is in tow onto electric while you have a generator running or whether you're hooked up to an electric source in a campground. Go over all settings for TVs and accessories, including where to mount TVs as these walls are really thin. Go over how to prep and install all furniture. Some is pretty obvious and some really isn't as obvious or as easy as it may seem. In this case, we have a sofa that serves three functions, a chair, a bed, and then a stowaway area for you to slide in your toys. Go over the power monitoring display and make sure you know what settings are on, whether it's just running solo or hooked up or running on a generator. Go over how to open and close all windows. This unit has four or five windows and three out of the five are not the same. There is one or more emergency exit windows depending on the size of your trailer. Make sure you know how to get through them. Now onto the most important part, the bathroom. Make sure everything works in there. Make sure he goes over what chemicals to put inside the toilet, how to empty the black water tank, how to prep it so that if you have to use it, you do the best thing possible to make sure it works. For the shower unit, make sure you check that both the gas and electric water heaters work for the water. That will be a problem later that you do not want to experience while you're camping. Make sure your microwave works. Show how your stove works. This stove just works very, very basic like a grill, even though it looks really nice. Also same thing with the oven. The oven actually needs to be lit manually on a pilot. Make sure all your water systems work and are shown specifically both on a stationary water hookup and on dry camp with your water pump working. Make sure that thing works. Make sure your radio and all speakers work. Make sure you know what type of fuses you need while you're on the road. In this case, we need 15 amp fuses. This is your carbon monoxide monitor and also low battery monitor. It beeps when it hears or senses any of those things. All right, now onto the exterior of the trailer. For one, this is a toy hauler, and so this has its own gas station with an emergency shutoff switch right there. Inspect your tires rigorously. Make sure there is no dry rot. If they are, make sure they change it before you even tow that thing off the lot. Make sure you know where the propane spot is. Make sure all leg extenders work up and down. This is your black water storage unit for your hose. It's invaluable. Make sure it closes correctly and isn't loose or it'll fly off while you're in transit. These are your propane tanks that should be both linked to one gauge and depending on which direction that gauge is pointed should give you the indication via green or red or in the middle on how full that tank is. If you have them both open, you can't get an accurate reading because they fill each other. So always make sure one's on while the other one's shut off. 
Make sure your propane tanks are in good working condition with no dents or deformations of any kind, and make sure your propane cover isn't falling apart and is in good condition. Make sure your trailer jack works in all aspects. It might be the most important part of your trailer altogether. This trailer has a safety lanyard you must hook to your hitch mount in the event that your trailer separates from your vehicle during transit. This is the cutoff switch to the battery that runs your trailer while it's not hooked up or running on a generator. Things like to break in a trailer at the most inconvenient time, so make sure you are well aware on all tools that will activate things that are electric so you can get them up and you won't be stranded out there on the campground. This unit came with a Cummins generator, a very nice generator that costs thousands of dollars. So make sure you go over what is needed to maintain that thing and how often you should maintain it, whether or not it had the oil change recently, all those things really matter. That's your direct satellite hookup. Here's your main power hookup, which they're gonna take off later and run the trailer. And here's the things he's gonna to explain to you because I don't know what I'm talking about. At the back of your hot water heater, which there's not really much you need to do with it. Okay, you see that? You wanna leave that on on. And the reason you leave it on is because that is your electrical connection for your 110. If you turn it off, then that water heater will only run on propane. That right here, this is where you would drain it. Drain if what? you drain the water heater, if you need to drain it. Oh, okay. And it also is an anode rod attached to this bolt. The anode rod, you'll need to change once every couple of years, depending on how often and how hard the water is. What the anode rod is, is- This keeps it from rusting? Exactly. Yeah. It collects all the hard water deposits and the mineral deposits and all that stuff. Okay. For, for electric, and that one's for gas, this is your electric heater. That would be your electric heater, and this is the firebox for the propane heater. Okay? Firebox? Well, that's where your your igniter is. Oh, so all this is just so this propane is propane right there, and then that would be the electric rod that would heat it when you're using electricity. And the electrical plug is right here, mm -hmm. and then this again is your I call it firebox for your propane. So when you're using propane, this will get hot. Electrical plug back in here for right. your fridge. Okay. And then this is the propane um, part of it. So now onto your fill stations. This is where you fill your water tank with your hose from your house. It may take a long time, so be ready. This is where you would empty it all. Empty it all after each trip is recommended that you do that. Just make sure you purchase the proper hose fitting for your city connections or you'll blow all your plumbing inside your trailer up. Make sure they go over the waste gates for both the black water and gray water tanks, how to use them in order. This is the fitting to your black water tank spray down. It is invaluable and it will keep you from having problems associated with black water tanks. We demonstrate how to use this and dump your trailer at the end of this video. This is an outdoor shower, which works the same as an indoor shower, it's just outside. Because this is a toy hauler and not a travel trailer, it came with a fuel station for toys. Although I'm only gonna be using kayaks and small boats, so this is gonna be pretty useless unless I run out of gas in my car, in which case it's invaluable. Make sure you check out your ladder storage, check out the roof, check out everything on the exterior that you possibly can before you drive it off the lot, because once you drive it off the lot, it's yours. It is also highly recommended, in fact paramount, that you get an anti-sway tow hitch. This is super necessary on all trucks, especially if you are towing on a half ton and not a diesel. They have all kinds of hitches out there from different styles and different price ranges. Just get one that works. Well, all right, so we're taking off here. They said to try the alleyway and try the parking brakes right here. We're gonna go ahead and squeeze those. Yeah, not the, actually the truck's not even stopping. So. It turned out that whoever did the bearings for the trailer wheels packed in so much grease that it spilled out into the brakes and made the brakes useless. That actually had to be repaired. There were also some breakers, so half the outlets in the trailer didn't work. I didn't test that. So make sure you test everything thoroughly and do not leave with that trailer very far unless you make sure everything is good. Because the likeness of stuff breaking on the trailer after you take it is highly likely. These things are not made very well. And the roads that you travel on in the US, like the I-10 or the I-40, they're just super ruthless on trailers. They're not forgiving at all. Oh yeah, and don't try this either. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, you do. Go, go. Go that way, that way, that way, there. Go that way. Not, not, not too far. You're gonna run to the cat here. Straighten out a little bit. Straighten out a little bit. I got nothing. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be here. You'll be fine. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm gonna hit your. Oh. Oh, you're hitting it. You're hitting it now. You're hitting my wall. Turn the, turn the wheels that way. Yeah, keep going. All right, I might hit that. Oh, dang, it's not gonna fit. Well, oh, I guess you have to keep doing. 
Well, so the toy hauler failed the side-by-side -side test. Apparently you need an obscenely big toy hauler to haul a side-by-side -side like that. Maybe a smaller one, but whatever, I had fun. Me and my family went all over the country, explored a lot of stuff within our first year. We had a blast, experienced things in ways we would never be able to experience, even just going out in a tent. Last but not least, find dump stations. There's only certain places that will actually accept dump stations, like find ahead on Google or whatever, which ones actually do it, and make sure you dump your black water and gray water accordingly. You might have to pay a fee, but whatever, it's worth it. You dump your black tank first, and once the majority of it's out, then you put the hose on, to the spray nozzles for the black tank and then you let it drain. That's what's happening right now. It's a slow but steady trickle. You just leave it there for 15, 20 minutes and you would imagine the stuff that's still in there. But once that's pretty much clear and you see nothing clear water, no more chunks, then open your gray tank gate right there and then flush the rest of your tube out. That way when you pull it off, it doesn't smell like garbage. <laughs> it's the best way to clean it in that sequence. And right now there was a lot of gray water in there, man. I don't know what happened, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you want to do more trailer vids. I'll see you out there. Peace.